This little boy is obviously having trouble learning his ABC. <laughs> He is part of the largest private collection of dolls in the world. The collection is owned by one of these three men. What is your name, please? My name is Sam Pryor. My name is Sam Pryor. My name is Sam Pryor. Only one of these men is the real Sam Pryor. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you and welcome once again to, to Tell the Truth. Good evening, panel. Good evening, Bud. You are our pearl in the oyster again tonight, aren't you? Huh? <laughs> and very lovely, I must say. We're brought to you tonight by Dristan Decongestant Tablets for relief of colds, misery, sinus congestion. Panel, I'm sure you're uh, aware of something. If you're not, let me tell you or remind you. Some of you go back all the way with me. Uh, tonight marks the start of our ninth year of To Tell the Truth. <laughs> I can't think of a better way to celebrate than to get right to work. So right. open up that envelope and let's start with this first story. I would have thought a little booze, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, Sam Pryor, am vice president of an international airline. On my trips all over the world, I combine business with my hobby, collecting dolls. I now own 8,000 dolls from 89 different countries. My collection includes everything from a clay doll some 6,000 years old to a present-day Barbie doll. There have been dolls as long as there have been little girls to love them. In my doll collection is one made by the Sioux Indians of our American West, a Princess Augusta doll from 19th century Germany, a Japanese puppet from the collection of Mrs. Fritz Chrysler, a girl harpist from the time of Napoleon III, a bearded gentleman from North Africa, and of course the most famous of all bearded gentlemen, Santa Claus. My collection also includes dolls made out of string, corn cobs, nuts, and even banana leaves. Signed, Sam Pryor. These three gentlemen all claim to be Sam Pryor, collector of dolls. And we'll start the questioning, if we may, with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you, bud. No, uh, number two, I'm sort of curious. What's a Princess Augusta doll? A Princess Augusta doll was made in Germany in the late 1800s. Well, number and three. And she wears her iron cross around her neck. An iron cross around her neck? Three, like the Nazi decoration? <laughs> number exactly. three? No, long oh. before that. I see. Num uh, number one, what is a bisque doll? I don't know. Uh, number two, do you know? A what bisque? a bisque? Bisque. A bisque doll is uh, um, um, a parian or a uh, china doll. Thank you. Number three, what is a patsy doll? Patsy doll was a doll played by children. Thank you. I had one. Uh, number <laughs> one. Number one, what's a kabuki doll? The dancing doll. Thank you. Orson Bean. Yes, uh, number one, uh, from what uh, century is the famous Pincus doll? Oh, that goes, that goes back quite a way. That goes yes, back to about, uh, about 300 B.C. 300 B.C., the Pincus right. doll. Number three. <laughs> when you first started collecting dolls, <laughs> number three, uh, did you have any trouble with the other kids in the neighborhood at all? <laughs> I didn't start until I was grown up. Oh, well, that's safer. Number two, now, uh, the, the, the Barbie doll. Uh, you say you have the Barbie doll? Yes. Who is Barbie's boyfriend? Ken. Number one, who is Midge? That's the friend of Ken and Barbie. Number three, what does Midge look like? <laughs> Not bad. Kitty Carlisle. Number two, what is a Kachina doll? 
Kachina is the Hopi Indian doll. Thank you. Number three, which country makes the most complicated mechanical dolls? Japan today. Uh, number one, how, what sort of period is this clay doll from? Where did it, what country did it come from? Oh, that was the very, very first doll, Egypt. Egypt. Okay. Uh, number two, what is the airline that you're the vice president of? Pan American World Airways. Uh, number three, who is the president of Pan American? Mr. Gray. Mr. Gray? Yes. Thank you. Uh, number one, do you have any singing dolls? Oh, yes. Number two, where do you keep this huge collection? In a barn in Connecticut. Number three, do you have any children to enjoy uh, them? Tom Poston. Uh, number two, do you, do you agree with number three about the uh, country that makes the most complicated dolls now, number two? Mechanical well, I, dolls. I complicated think, mechanical dolls, yeah. I think the mechanical dolls are most, uh, are really made here, the most, right in this country, but probably bought in Japan. They're sold here, but under uh, American name, but probably made in Japan. Oh, thank you. Number three, are you interested in modern dolls? All kinds of dolls, yes, sir. What was the largest selling doll that was ever put on the market? Do you know number three? The quintuple dolls. Is that so? Yes, sir. Would you agree with that, number two? That's hard to say. There was competition, I think, with the old doll, the Bilo. The Bilo are the, uh, are the quintuplets. I always thought it was Shirley Temple. Well, there you are. That's what you find out when you're on this show, and that means that our time is gone. That bell ringing that way, as you well know. But there is time for you to mark your ballot, so will you do so, panel? Mark your ballots at once, without change, and without any consultation whatsoever. Simply vote now for number one, number two, hmm. or number three. Our team of challengers will receive the usual $250 for every incorrect vote. Are all ba ballots marked? Very well, Tom, for whom did you vote? <laughs> I voted for number three. I knew it wasn't number two because he wasn't familiar with the pinkest doll. <laughs> it was number one. The pinkest doll. And uh, <laughs> I thought number three had that kind of uh, equanimous look that a guy would have to have to seriously collect dolls. So I voted for number three. Thank you, Dad. Well, I voted for number two because Irving Weinspar makes the pinkest doll it's made today. And, and as far as the, he knew what a bisque doll was, and when I was little, I had, had a bisque doll that I wasn't allowed to play with because it was good. <laughs> Orson Pinkett. Uh, Orson Pinkett. <laughs> I was sorry that nobody mentioned the fact that Raggedy Ann was 50 years old three or four days ago, which is pretty good because Little Orphan Annie is only 47. Yeah. <laughs> Raggedy Ann was... Uh, no, even though number one knew about the original Pinkett doll, which was found in a cave some several thousand years B.C., I didn't vote for him. I voted for number two because he has a twinkle in his eye. He looks like a collector of... Pinker's dolls. <laughs> I voted for number two because number one said he knew what the Pinker's doll was, and I have a feeling that Orson made that up. And number three hesitated slightly before saying the name of the president of his company, and I hope it's not number three because that's a black mark against him. And I thought number two knew about the Bisque doll, and I think it's number two. Very well, the votes are all in, and the minds are made up. Let's find out at once which one of these gentlemen, in truth, is the one who has a fabulous collection of dolls. Will the real Sam Pryor please stand up? Yeah. Ah! Thank you, Sam. I'd like to see them all. Oh, you should, <laughs> believe me. In, in addition, uh, Sam, in addition to being vice president of Pan American World Airways, is a former Marine, pilot, and a very, very dear friend and neighbor of mine. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, great personal joy to have him on the show. You should see his doll collection. Believe me, it is just fabulous. That one is incredible. They Isn't it? A little Isn't one. it? Now, number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? Yes, I'm Charles Beinbeck. I'm a publisher of newspaper Sunday supplements. <laughs> And number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Dick Miller and I'm with Logan Tex, a textile importer. <laughs> well, gentlemen, there was one incorrect vote and that's the one that's important in your lives at the moment. That means, of course, there's $250 coming your way from Dristan. On your way out, you'll receive a gift package from all the fine products made by Dristan. And we thank you very much for being with us and I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Good night and God bless you. our next team of challenges.
What is your name, please? My name is Janet Pering. My name is Janet Pering. My name is Janet Pering. Panel, please follow along with this story, if you will. I, Janet Pering, am a high school student. In my spare time, I raise, feed, and train Angus steers for show in competition. Last month, my prize Angus, Charger, was chosen world's champion steer at the International Livestock Show. When I realized that by winning, Charger might be taken away and cut up for stakes, I broke down right in front of everybody and cried. My tears soon turned to smiles, however, when a bank decided to buy Charger and send him on a goodwill exhibition tour. I'm happy for two reasons. Not only was Charger's life saved, but also I earned $17,500 to pay my way through college. Signed, Janet Perry. <laughs> These three young ladies all claim to be Janet Perring. I guess you could call her a weeping steer raiser. <laughs> we'll start the cross-examination with Orson Bean. Orson? Yes, Miss Perring number two. Uh, where are you from? Indiana. Indiana. And what made you decide to raise bulls? Well, they're not bulls. They're steer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Number one, there is a difference, right? Uh, that's a... Uh, oh, there's steers a big are difference. male horses, are they? What are... I mean, male cows or... A well, steer... What is a steer? I uh, Come well, think of it, I just don't know, I guess. What a is steer it? is just a brand of beef cattle. <laughs> <laughs> number three, what color is an Angus? Black. Uh, number two, what, what uh, breed, breed of cattle has a white face? Um, the Holstein. Uh, number one, what breed, of what, what breed of cattle would you say has a white face? It's the Hereford. And where do you come from? Minnesota. Ah. Number three, do you know about the 4-H clubs? Yes. Are you a member? Yes. Who runs them? Well, they pick leaders from um, that particular area. Thank you. Number two, when you, pick, when you breed your, and, and, and train your, your steer, what do you make him do as a trainer? Well, we teach him to walk. Teach him to walk? He doesn't know yes. how to walk? <laughs> well, we teach him to walk with the harness on. What do you use to train him? Tom Poston. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. Number three, who was going to cut up your, your prize charger? He's not going to be slaughtered. <laughs> no. I mean, who was going to slaughter him? Why were you afraid? You could have said no, no slaughtering. Oh. Well, I couldn't have said that. Because <laughs> he has to be sold. He has to be sold? Yes. What, uh, number three, number one, how much would you say that the one who came in second uh, was sold for? She decided not to sell him. She could keep him, but I couldn't. You had to sell yours if he won. The grand champion, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> number two. You number two, how old is Charger? Um, he's 14 months. And number three, how much did he weigh? 1,000 pounds. Thank you. Uh, number one. Is, uh, uh, is it a black, is Charger a black Angus? Yes, he is. Thank you. Uh, number two, what kind of uh, 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 cattle do they raise on the King Ranch? Well, they raise all kinds. But number three, but is there one particular kind they're noted for? Santa Gertrudis. Thank you. Uh, number one, where was this international stock show held? In Chicago. Oh. And that's all the time you have. So oh. pull your steers back in the chutes and mm. mark your ballots, oh. if you will, please. Mark them at once. Without change, without consultation, of course, while voting, vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked fairly swiftly, all right. Tom, for whom did you vote? <coughs> I voted for number one, because she looks like she's going to burst into tears any minute. <laughs> no, number three doesn't look like she would cry. I think she would have had something figured out, and uh, number two didn't know. So I voted for number one. Peggy. You know, I felt that number one really looked so sincere that she really loved that charger. But I voted for number three because she knows about the same gratuitous animals that they raised in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean? Well, uh, it, it could be any of them. They're all sweet girls. And uh, uh, number two uh, said that a Holstein has a white face. And number one said it was a Hereford. Uh, I don't know. I think Hereford 
it's, uh, I don't know. Anyway, I voted for number three, I think, yeah. <laughs> because of that, she rattled off an answer to Peggy's question, which I didn't understand. Kitty. I voted for number one. I think they're all adorable, and each one could be the right one. And number three did know about the Santa Gertrudis, which is Peggy's question. But mm. number one knew about the Herefords, which I do believe have white faces. Mm. And, and she kept nodding when the others were giving the right answers. So I think it's number one. Uh, I, I won't ask you to repeat it. I'll just simply uh, say that we'll go right for the truth now in our own present situation here and find out, since the votes are all in, which one of these three young ladies is in truth. The, uh, I guess I called her weeping steer razor. Will the real Janet Perring please stand up? Janet, I have a, a, a message that came just before the show that I would like to tell you about. The Department of Agriculture has just announced that they are sending Janet Perring and Charger to West Germany to the Green Wheat Exposition as Goodwill Ambassador to help promote the sale of American beef abroad. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to cry again any minute, I can see that. Well, that's the right kind of tears. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Nancy Nelson. I'm 17 years old and I'm a newscaster on KMSP-TV in Minneapolis, Minnesota. <laughs> and number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Chris James. I'm a housewife. I'm the mother of a daughter, eight, and a son, seven. <laughs> How's that possible? Easily, I'm 26. You're 26? <laughs> oh, man, I hope you I'm keep... 14. Yeah, keep this same uh, element, whatever it is, the rest of your life. <laughs> You'll be in... Wow, that's amazing. Checking the score, ladies, you find that there were two incorrect votes, and those are the ones that should bring smiles to your faces, along with that announcement to you, Janet. And, of course, that's a total of $500 in Dristan. On your way out, you'll receive a gift package of all the fine products in the makers of Dristan. We thank you very much for being with us tonight and brightening everything so nicely. Goodbye, and God bless you. Now let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Bernard de la Giraudière. My name is Bernard de la Giraudière. My name is Bernard de la Giraudière. Panel, please follow along as I read. I, Bernard de la Giraudière, am a member of French nobility and an authority on the wine of princes, champagne. I am in this country lecturing on the history, benefits, and proper serving of champagne and debunking the senseless wine snobbery so prevalent today. The male sex has always fostered the notion that men alone are the true gourmets of this world. To combat this, I am assisting and advising a group of 20 famous American hostesses in organizing Les Dames de Champagne, a wine and food society, the membership of which will be open exclusively to women. Signed, Bernard de la Giraudière. <laughs> These three gentlemen all claim to be, as you heard, Vicomte Bernard de la Giraudière. Authority on Champagne. We'll start with Kitty Carlyle. Thank you, Bud, because I want to enroll immediately as one of these dames de champagne to find Thank out you. about what you do. Uh, number one, there's a canard going the rounds <laughs> that the best champagne is always being sent to England. Is this true? No. No. Number two, why do they call brandy fine champagne? Because of the name of the area comes from Campania. I see. Uh, number three, what is the famous uh, place in Reims where they have very good champagne? A number of places all around Reims, including Epernay. Uh, number one, there's a famous chateau in Reims where they have marvelous champagne in the cellar. What is it? Number there, are, one. there are several chateaux in Reims where they have... Uh, and several wine. cellars. <laughs> Tom Boston. Thank you. Number three, how come you want to exclude the men from this society? I mean, but the title excludes them right away, you know, as for the most part. But well, how come you don't want to have men in there? Well, to start with, but uh, it will come later. Oh, I see. Thank you. Number two, uh, what's a real good uh, recent vintage? <clears throat> if 
For wines. For wines or for champagne? I guess you're a specialist, huh? Well, let me ask you this, number two. What is vintage determined by? In either case. Again, in wine or champagne? Well, in France. <laughs> Is there, number one, is there Peggy a good... Peggy Cash. Um, Vicon Bernard Rouge Rodier, I love that name. <laughs> number two, uh, where is the Chateau Suren? Chateau Suren? Yes. Outside Paris. Thank you. Uh, number three, uh, what is the main hotel in Epernay? Hotel de la Poste. Thank you. Uh, number one, what champagne company makes Dom Perignon? Oui, Chandon. Uh, thank you. Number one, do they put out a Dom Perignon every year? No, vintage, yes. Thank you. Number three, where is Montebello champagne come from? USA. Thank you. <laughs> Orson Bean. Yes, uh, number two, uh, which uh, champagne, well-known champagne, comes in an odd-shaped bottle, different from the others? Laurent Perrier. Number one, do you agree with that? Yes. Number three? Yes. Is there a, uh, number one, is there a, a champagne that comes in a squarish kind of a bottle? No. Uh, with a number three with a long skinny neck? No. It's a little something I put out myself. Isn't it? <laughs> oh, a famous, uh, number two, there is a famous vineyard in Paris. Do you know what it is right in Paris? Montmartre. Montmartre? I thought maybe it was in the Pinkett bottle. I wasn't too sure. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for questions and answers. So come to your final answers right away, panel, if you will, and mark your ballots. Mark them at once, without change, without consultation. You know that, I'm sure. So simply vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked. Oh. Very well. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one. Uh, I, I thought he either knew the subject very well or he was a pretty good juicer himself because he was <laughs> very confident about all those answers. Peggy, why were you groaning? Tragedy is struck. Oh? I voted for number two, and now I realize that that I voted wrong. <laughs> he gave me the right answer. And I, oh. Well, there it is. One, you can't change him, right? Well, number two, right? No, I voted, I voted no, for number voted two. voted for yes. number two, yes. All right. Orson. I voted for number two as well. I, I, I think that that uh, vineyard in Paris is in Montmartre, but I don't think it is Montmartre. I'm not sure. Maybe it's him. Tettinger is the name of the champagne in the funny bottle, and it's great. <laughs> Kitty. I voted for number one. We didn't have a chance to ask him as many questions, but I felt it was number one. Well, that splits it up fairly evenly. Two for number one, two for number two. Let's go into the area of truth now and find out if we can how right or wrong the panel may be. As we learn now, which one of these gentlemen, in truth, is the authority on campaign? Will the real Vicomte Bernard de la Giraudière please stand up? Strike. <gasps> Thank you, sir, very much. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Yves Montejordan. I am in the advertising department of Time International. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Bernard Gérin, and I am with UNICEF, United Nations Children's Fund. We check the score and we find that it was good pooling, 50-50. There were two incorrect, that's twice $250 for a total of $500 for you gentlemen to divide. That, of course, comes to you from Anison. On your way out, you'll receive a gift package of all the fine products and the makers of Anison. And our sincere thanks go along with this for joining us tonight and hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Good night and God bless you. We have time for tonight. Good night, panel. Good night, Good night. Good night for Tristan. Don't forget to join us at the same time next week. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. And, of course, don't forget to tell the truth. And a Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Don't forget the Joy Bishop Show is moving. Starting tomorrow night, you'll see Joy and his family every Tuesday evening at 8, 7 Central Time on CBS.
the truth has been brought to you by Anison, the headache tablet to relieve pain. So relax tension, calm nerves. Anison. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, this program was pre-recorded. <laughs>